getting near the road. I don't want anyone to notice me. Sticking my colorful headband in my pocket for a moment. Now we go get some cattails. Cattails are great to, to eat this time of year. You pull the stalk and you'll find a white part at the bottom. It's good stuff. Now this part up here isn't really good to eat because it's too fibrous and chewy. But right down here, that is good to eat. It's hard if you, uh, like you're watching this video and it's fall, and you're like, I wonder what the heck that tastes like. If you're wondering what it tastes like, me, as a video guy, it's my responsibility to tell you, so I'm going to describe it. It's like celery, only softer. Think of the texture as the difference between butter and whipped butter. I mean, it's nothing, well, actually, see how it breaks up when you bite it? There are little fibers, but they're not tough at all. But if you boil it, you can go for bigger stalks, higher up on the stalk. But if you're just eating it like I am, this is good. And you know when to quit because it starts to get tough. Right there, see? So I got a little bit because those were small cattail shoots. But here's a big one. See, it's bigger leaves than that one. I'll get in there and grab it and show you. The other thing is, rock it a little so that you're not pulling up the root. There we go, that was perfect. Okay, one of the things you have to know when you're gathering any wild food is, are you gathering it on top of a hazardous waste dump? Or, I mean, these gullies can hold a lot of pollutants. But this is Ann Arbor, Michigan, so I know I'm safe. I got a whole bunch of people that make sure the waterways are clean. And that's one great thing about living in Ann Arbor and next to the Huron River and, and also when you go out the beaten path. You can do something like this. Just grab a cattail chute out of a ditch in early spring and eat it. It's very tender. I think I've cooked these once because I do what I'm doing now. I envision, all right, I'll grab a big bundle for a, a side dish at a meal, and then I never do it. I'm just like, I eat it right there. That's what I'm doing now. That was easier. See, underneath the mud is this rhizome. And cattails can be roasted. They can be put in a bucket of water and you smash them all up and then what floats to the bottom. After you've washed it, then you wash them in water while you break them up. And this paste forms at the bottom, it's, you can dry it out, it's like cattail flour. These are real fibrous, as you can see. This is a perfect place to tell you about Phragmites, which is different than the cattails I was just showing you. This is an invasive species from Egypt. Gardeners brought it over because they like the feathery long reeds. But look how tall they are. I'm gonna walk right down here. You know, could compare to me, these things are tall. I'm 5'11", maybe. Six foot with my boots on. These things spread and spread and they just crowd out. See the little shoots this year? That's not cattails where they should be growing. Hey, I wonder if I can eat this. <laughs> it tastes like a real strong version of a cattail. But I don't know if it's edible. So I'm not going to eat it. I can Google it and find out. But see how thick this is? In the fall, when these are real robust, they haven't had a winter to deteriorate. This can catch fire. And they have the fire department out, trying to put this stuff out, and it's really hard to put out. It's mostly like paper. And it just burns and burns, especially the way it's, it stands together in a stand like this. The heat from the flames just 
start some synergy. And it's a gigantic fire hazard. I guess the, Egypt, the Egyptians use this to make their reed boats. And I would not like to be around Phragmites in Egypt because it's prime hippo habitat and hippos are killers. I never knew that. I always thought they were these sweet, lovable, fat animals. No, they're kill ya. So, I like North America much better. See it? it? Used to be cattails. Now it's Phragmites, an invasive species. Not good, can't stop it. The muskrats are doomed. See how it grows higher up the bank? That means drier conditions than the cattails can survive. It's taller, so it shades the cattails, takes the nutrients that the cattails would use. It's just bad news. That's what invasive species are. They're, they're not fitted to the ecosystem that they are introduced to. Because of well-meaning, but uninformed, naive people that damage the environment. Look at what they did to Michigan. I mean, and this is just Michigan. It's been migrating out from Delaware and the East Coast for many, many years. I've watched its progress. And now it's here. And there's nothing we can do to stop it. And it's because some gardeners thought, let's get some beautiful reed plants from Egypt and put them in our garden. Well, thanks a lot, pals. At least we're not as bad as Australia with their giant toads and their rabbits or whatever they had in invasive but I still want the world that we have today rather than the one even 50 years ago so many improvements in our lives and so many improvements to the environment despite these lost battles there are wars won compared to the time when I was a kid and I got a lot of videos telling you that it's hard to believe because environmentalists want you to believe that we are under the worst assault of all time that is not true at all we have come so far in fixing our environment for instance I'll put a link at the end of this video to the carpocalypse that happened when I was a kid millions well, thousands and thousands and thousands of carp well, watch the video I'll tell you all about it